Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Doing trade deadline day. Woo! And I got some really good stuff going on. We've been doing trade videos now for months, months before the trade deadline. We did, we just did, oh, we did the Lindholm trade before it hit. We had him going to Boston. You know where he went? Boston. Because we're good at that. <laughs> Picking him pretty good. We also had, we had Giroux going to Colorado possibly, but Florida was in the top five. And I've got a very interesting one today, boys and girls. That, you like my Hartford hat? Love Hartford. Loved it. That was a great... Anyways, I just bought it, so I thought I'd wear it. Um, Lafreniere. Lafreniere, if you can believe that, is kind of in the mix right now. We're going to look at why the Rangers would be exploring. You know, are they giving up on Lafreniere now or whatever? I don't think so, and it's not all about that. But we're going to look at the Rangers lineup, Lafreniere as a player, what he is. We're going to look at six teams that would be could be very interested in him. Now, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure this isn't happening at the deadline right now. This is probably one that's going to happen in the summer, and that's why you got to sell up here because even after the trade deadline, we're going to be doing free agent stuff. Of course, we'll be doing playoff predictions and all that. And I'm going to be talking about all the trades that happen after the trade deadline. And we're going to be talking about trades that could likely happen in the summer. So sub yourself up and be part of the frolic here at Pearls of Wisdom Industries. That ah, don't matter. All right. Sub yourself up and be part of it. It's all part of the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show, which if you sub up, then you can be part of the live broadcast that I do fairly regularly, day, practically daily. I also do live streams in the evening and all that stuff. So, so be part of it. So it's Alex Lafreniere, Lafreniere, a lot of people will say. I don't know which way you like to say it. He's from the New York Rangers. He was a first overall pick, if you can believe that. And now... There's some talk. I have some news coming out of some pretty good sources that they're exploring the possibility of moving him on to somewhere else. And actually, when they made this pick, I uh, I was saying on my live broadcast that I thought this could very well happen because it was an odd spot for him. And uh, we'll look at that right away. We'll look at why I thought it was an odd spot, how that – we'll look at the Rangers' depth chart. We'll look at what – Lafreniere offers his contract, all of that coming up right here. But first, let's look at the source that allows us to even do this. Here we go. Rangers making Lafreniere available in right trade. As of David Pagnota of the fourth period, very good insider. In fact, he's one of my favorites. He doesn't get enough play. There's a lot of great ones out there. But when David Pagnota comes up with something, it's usually really good. Like, it has a lot of depth to it. Um, the Rangers have made forward Alex Lafreniere available if the team is willing to come forward with a huge offer that includes a top-flight talent who has term left on his deal and a reasonable cap pick. This player needs to be young and able to fit into their long-term salary cap strategy as a big name talent comes up for extension. So why would they do this? And we're going to look at that. We're going to look at that. Why would they even think about doing something like this? Let's take a look at the New York Rangers and uh, where they are in their situation right now. Okay. Um, first of all, the big, the most important thing in the land right now for everything is cap space, isn't it? It's what everybody talks about with every deal, and it should because it's totally necessary for that to happen. Now, um, this next year, as it stands, they have $10 million in cap space, all right, which is not an incredible lot. Uh, you know, it's not a huge amount of cap space. When you consider they got to re-sign Kako, who at this point probably won't get too much of a raise, but still a raise nonetheless. Um, Samuel Blay will probably get the same as what he already had. 
uh, Gorgia will probably get moved on and they'll use a cheaper backup. So you might actually, he was getting 2.4. I believe Gorgia will not be re-signed. Uh, he'll be traded and they'll get a cheaper backup. So that'll give them a little more space. Uh, Libor Haja, I th ha Hayek, I think, will also be part of the deal and move on. They have a lot of depth guys coming up right now. So, you know, Vetrano is going to need a new deal. It's going to be not much, a little bit more. And then Ryan Strom, there's been so much talk that they're not looking, having, they're having a difficult time signing him as right, right now as well. And I think this Lafreniere trade would go a long way as to whether they're going to sign him or not. I believe they're probably trying to look for a center here. And also, they're going to look for a right winger. Now, why would I believe that? Well, let's look at their depth chart. See, this was the reason why I thought Lafreniere, when they drafted him, and I don't blame him for drafting him. He was probably, you know, maybe, you know, I don't blame him for drafting. I'm not going to go into the draft and who else they could have drafted at the time. But when they did draft him, they already had Chris Kreider. They already had Artemi Panarin. And Lafreniere, as you can see here, it says left wing, right wing. They've been exploring him on the right wing and it hasn't been working out. And that's basically the problem. If he can't be a right wing option for the Rangers, he's buried in this lineup, which isn't good for him. And it's not good for them either. But he's an extremely good talent. Um, look, we look at his points, 13 goals, 8 assists, and 21 points. He's only 20 years old. And he, that, that's not bad point production for a guy who hasn't been able to play very high up in the lineup, not getting the greatest power play time. And basically, his growth is kind of stunted. He's still a big boy at 6'1". He still plays big. He still has tons of talent. He has crazy upside. All of those things haven't changed. And I can understand why they wouldn't ex mind exploring the idea for Lafreniere's case and their own case to fill in something a little better than maybe Ryan Strom up the middle, maybe more affordable than Strom up the middle, or a big-time right winger. Now, why right winger? Well, Kako would normally be here. As you can see, he's injured. He's kind of been moving up getting better and better. He's only 21. He's still got a ton of upside. They have Kako there. They got oops, they got Fatrano, who isn't really your classic second-line right winger. I think they could, would really like to upgrade on the right side. Um, not too many th players pounding at the door right now to take a spot on the right side either. Pretty okay guys, but not great guys. So it's, it's just basically um, positional management here if they decide to do something like that. And I think even Lafreniere is kind of like, you know what, guys, I'm not a right winger. If you're not going to play me up in the top two, I'm even okay with exploring a trade somewhere as well. All right. So look at let's look at – tell me, Rangers fans, sub up, by the way. Sub yourself up because we do this stuff all the time. Tell me what you think about this Lafreniere idea. Do you think maybe they should explore trading Chris Kreider, who has, I believe, no movement clauses? You're not trading Panarin or some other deal rather than that? Let us know there in the comment section. I think a big deal could be coming for the Rangers in the summer, though. The first one we're going to look at, and the reason why we're going to look at this one, is because it was the one when I brought this up on my live stream that everybody went to. I don't know if it's the best play. I actually don't, but I picked six and they could have been one of them. And that is the Edmonton Oilers. I think the Edmonton Oilers would be very interested in the Lafreniere. And I, I don't, I completely understand why anybody would have said the Edmonton Oilers because they're capped out. Uh, they have Evander Kane who they're likely not going to re-sign. They got him for a cheap deal because of his situation. They're not likely to going to be able to re-sign him. He's going to take off in free agency, more than likely. Zach Hyman goes up here. And then you've got Nugent Hopkins, who can play the left side. However, I do believe that Woodcroft 
likes to play him up the middle and have a really deep top three. And getting somebody like Lafreniere would, he, first of all, he'd have a left wing spot. Um, Hyman would go up here. Hopkins could go up the middle. They could play Lafreniere on his left side. Big, solid, Oilers type player that they could put there. The problem is here, I don't see them getting the center they want unless they actually trade Nugent Hopkins in the deal. And I think Nugent Hopkins might be a little rich. Well, $5 million for a long time. Uh, possibly. I'm not going to take it off the table. It's possible they could use Nugent Hopkins here. Um, I, while I'm doing this, I never even thought about it. They, but he's got a serious no-movement clause. And not only that, they absolutely love him in Edmonton. And it's hard to find players that want to be there. So I really don't think they would want to go that road. I think if you're going to go with Edmonton, you could get Jesse Pulley Harvey. Harvey. Um, I don't think that could be straight across. They would have to do something else. It would have to be a first-round pick, maybe uh, Philip Broberg or something like that. So New York would get their right winger that they're looking for. Jesse Pulley Harvey is very underrated. Very good two-way winger. Uh, he's not making... They said they wanted a guy with term. He would be a restricted free agent, but he wouldn't be that all that expensive to sign right now. And you could sign him long term, I'm sure, as long as he wants to go there. Excellent player. Get your right side taken care of there for the Rangers. And then maybe you're looking at something serious. Maybe if you, they're willing to go with the, uh, Xavier Borgo, who they just picked up, and he's just crushing it in junior right now. You could have a guy for the future. However, I really think the Rangers are looking for a center now and a winger now. So this may take Edmonton off the table because I don't see that here. It would probably be Pouli Harvey at first and Borjo or something of that nature, and maybe the Rangers throw something in as well. Not the perfect fit, but I get why Edmonton, Oil Edmonton Oilers fans would have looked, liked the idea of taking them. Edmonton Oilers fans, what do you think? I know Lafreniere hasn't put up the numbers that have been expected him up right, up right now, but I do believe they will. What do you think he will? Sub yourself up, comment in the comment section, and tell me what you think there, Edmonton Oilers fans. Okay, next, the Detroit Red Wings. And I take the Detroit Red Wings here mainly because there is a lot of talk right now that Stevie Y may not be all that happy with Bertuzzi. Now, he's got two more years left. He doesn't have a lot of term, but he does have some term. There's been some issue, of course, that he wouldn't. he's one of the people that are not vaxxed for whatever reason, and that could be part of the equation. Maybe Tyler Bertuzzi's ask, he might be a little high now. But for now, he might he could probably fit in for the Rangers not too bad. And I could see somebody like Pia Suter going back, a cheaper second line center. Um, he's never gonna blow out blow you out of the water, Pius to Pia Suter, but he wouldn't have to sign Strom like they don't want to, and he could fit into that second line not too bad. Bertuzzi is a tough player, he can play the right or left equally. Very good at both. That's what's good about this deal, I think, more than anything. Um, the other guy could be uh, Zadina. I don't think they would go that direction, though. Possibly uh, Joseph Valino, if you ever think he could be a second-line center. But I think Pia Suter, Bertuzzi, maybe a little more. Maybe the Rangers skip uh, uh, Heedle back, who hasn't really been working out there. I think a deal could be worked out here. Detroit Red Wings fan, what would you think? This, yes, we look at Lafreniere's, uh, first of all, sub up so you can tell comment on the comment section about this. Give me a sub, and I'd love to talk to you about it. Um, his numbers haven't been great now, but his upside is absolutely incredible. If Bertuzzi isn't working out in Detroit anyways, does not Lafreniere, solid, hard-hitting guy who really... Detroit, if there's one thing they're missing here, is probably a guy like that. And I know Bertuzzi already is a guy like that. 
But I think Lafreniere's upside is higher than Batuzzi's in the long run. And, you know, the New York Rangers get their right side guy in a center that can fill in until possibly find another one. Maybe he goes off. He's only 25 years old. He's, got, he's a good passer. All of those sort of things like that. And, you know, maybe some picks or what have you get thrown in to even it all up. Tell me what you think, Detroit fans and New York Rangers fans, of that package. Next, Minnesota Wild. Okay, this is an interesting one. I, the Minnesota Wild are in a position right now where, uh, as any Minnesota Wild fan knows, you know Minnesota Wild fans, by the way, sub up so you can comment on what I'm about to say here about Lafreniere going to your team. And uh, you can hear all this fine frolic for the next is forever. <laughs> Hit the bell, all of those sort of things. Um, we have the continual problem that's going to be happening for the next couple of years. Where the heck is it? Of Suter and Parise getting bought out, their buyout. And I don't know why I can't see it here. Oh, I know why. We'll look at it in a second. Suter and, 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 uh, Parise getting bought out, which really affects their cap all to heck. I got why they did it. It actually did make sense, but it really makes them cap strapped for the next little while for sure. Kind of building on, I believe, sort of a three-year plan as they move forward. They'll have $6 million left to sign a lot, fill a lot of holes here. It doesn't look like Kevin Fiala is going to be able to work. So, Let's go with Kevin Fiala as part of the deal. Kevin Fiala is a good right hand. He can play left or right equally. Another guy that can play left or right equally. He looks like he could be a 30, 40 goal scorer. You know, if given the right situation, and I do believe in New York, this would be the right situation. So, you would get Lafreniere to play on that left-hand side, who doesn't need a contract for the next little while. By the time he does need a contract, those buyouts could be kind of gone. He's got an incredible amount of upside. And I think you could throw in Frederick Goudreau. I know you love him. I know you love him. But he's 28 years old. He can support a second-line center role for the Rangers. They get a shooter on that right side and a really solid Goudreau for Lafreniere. Maybe more. You might even have to give up a little more Minnesota fans uh, because they, they know you're not going to sign Kevin Fiala. They know that. So his market value is not incredibly hot. If you don't have much leverage, general managers work that leverage to try to get you as little as they possibly can. So it could be more than Fred. It could be Frederick Goudreau and a pick or a really good prospect, possibly one of those two great uh, defensemen, Lambos or, or, or O'Rourke. But you're getting a guy that was a first overall pick, got a little bit buried in a Rangers lineup, but still projects to possibly be a point-of-game power forward. Power forward. Power forward, Minnesota fans. I don't see too many power forwards in here except for like Jordan Greenway who's still working out not too bad there Marcus Foligno is he's getting up there but you would have Fiala Joel Erickson Eck we know Rossi's coming up here soon he's a smaller dude up the middle there so you can have two big boys like Boldy and Lafreniere playing with Rossi just sounds right to me sounds right to me tell me what you would think Minnesota fans would you be interested in something like that I know he's not a, the thing I think most people are going to say here is well he hasn't really shown it yet well those are the times when you can get in there right you got to believe in the player if you don't believe in the player you don't make the deal I guess I still think Lafreniere has got a ton of upside myself next the LA Kings the LA Kings who claim that the rebuild is over and then go ahead and make the playoffs and the LA Kings love their big, solid players. They've got 
Quinton Byfield is an absolute beast. He's not putting up a lot of points yet, but he's still, you know, he's got crazy upside. And they're a little weak on the left hand side there in uh, in uh, LA. You know, Arvidsson and Athanasiu, they fill in spots. They're good, but are they going to be your long term crush it players? I, I, I wouldn't personally think so. So you're, they're pretty stacked on the right hand side. They got Adrian Kempe, Rasmus Kupari coming up. They've got Victor Arvidsson that can play that spot. Um, even at the Nassau, Dustin Brown is probably going to be on his way out, but they got a lot of people that can play that right side. However, if you're going to do something like this, if you want this power forward, it's going to have to cost you. It's going to cost you, no doubt about that. Um, how big do you, how much do you believe in Arthur Callian? Do you believe he's going to be like a crushing type guy? Adrian Kempe, is, 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 does he get any more upside than this? Maybe Adrian Kempe and, say, Rasmus Kupari is actually a better center than he is, I believe, a winger anyways. Something like that. They get Rangers get their second-line center. They get a guy with that is going needs to be re-signed, but as long as they can re-sign him on some reasonable term, they get the right guy, they get a second-line center, and you get Lafreniere. They can play. So you put, or maybe even Gabriel Velarde could be part of this deal. But if you really believe in Velarde, he's playing on the left-hand side. You know, you, now you've got Lafreniere, Dano, and Kalia. Or Kalia moves up here, and you can put, or, and you can put Victor Arvidsson on the second line right wing, but you get a power left winger in Lafreniere that still has term left on his contract that isn't going to go over the top and you can keep that you don't have to sign for the next year or two let's look at that real quick Lafreniere when do you have to resign him two more years and he's at 3.75 and he's going to need a qualifying offer you get a power forward. How those are so hard to find. So you get, you can take Trevor Moore, put him down here, and though you so much depth, it's absolutely crazy. So you got to believe in this player, absolutely. I think he was buried in the Rangers. I don't think he's any worse than he ever was when he was drafted. He's still got an immense amount of upside. Is it a bit of a risk? Sure, because he is going to need a. Uh, qualifying offer at 3.7. But if given the opportunity to play with a guy like Dan O, heck, you could even play him with Kopi. See how he does there. This guy was projected to be ranting in. What do you think, LA fans? Sub yourself up. Comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think. I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you. Next. Vancouver Canucks. We got one more after this. The Vancouver Canucks for Lafreniere. Right now they're playing Elias Peterson on the left-hand side because they're stacked up the middle with JT Miller and Bo Horvat. Now, there was a lot of talk about the Rangers interested in bringing JT Miller back. Could be. Vancouver Canucks are strapped cap-wise. Absolutely strapped. They have talked that they're going to have to trade some veterans to get some cap room down the road. This would be that. Lafreniere is making 3.7 for another couple years, for another for this year and next year. He's got crazy upside, and I believe the Rangers are going to be looking for a center here. I think they'll be looking for JT Miller, who's got a little bit of term. They could sign him after that. And possibly more. I think it could be JT Miller more. And more. It's a tough one to say if you could they would have to give more or not here. It depends on how much they like JT Miller. 75 points in 62 games, my friends. Damn good. Damn good numbers. Now those are his career numbers, so that could be a little bit concerning. 
Um, I still think that they'd want to look at the right side. And the other guy that could be into this is Brock Besser. But I think for them, he's looking to be a little bit steep. However, you could put Heedle out there as well. Uh, there could be a bigger trade here where you have, you have the other Miller from the Rangers, a defenseman that goes that he's going to need to be signed. And you're getting Besser and JT Miller, Lafreniere, Heedle, uh, Miller. It could be a huge trade in this case. I think this could be an absolutely massive trade. You got a Vancouver new management that wants to shake things up a little bit. The Rangers have this great asset in Lafreniere who's kind of buried down in their lineup that they want to max out the ability to be a contender right now. I do believe that, that they're ready to be a contender right now. This could be a powder keg trade, boys and girls, for sure. Go back to the New York Rangers. What Miller am I talking about? K. Andre. K. Andre Miller is going to need a contract in two years. Vancouver needs defense so bad. And the Rangers have some fantastic, they have Zach Jones, they have Schneider, they have Niels Lundqvist coming up that can play those spots there. I could see a big, big trade going on here. I could see JT Miller and Brock Besser for Heedle, Lafreniere, Keandre Miller, you know, that type of thing right there. That would be insane. Woo! That would be so exciting. Vancouver fans, what do you think of that? Sub yourself up. Tell me what you would think about a trade like that where you just get all these young guys that are still good, ready to play right now to have this team not only be good next year, but for the long term. I think this was something that they would consider here in Vancouver. When you look at the playoff run that they made, they started to fall off at the end. And honestly, when you look at the roster, this is a tweener team. They need to really get a good base here and build this team up. I do believe that Rutherford believes that as well. And I do believe that's what they're looking to do. So you could get a bunch of younger players like that, have some cap room and maybe add some veterans and just build, 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 build some depth in this organization. Tell me what you think, Vancouver fans. Uh, next, and this would be sick. Colorado Avalanche. The Colorado Avalanche, if they wanted to just go absolutely off and they believe in this player, that being Lafreniere, who, like we said, has got a $3 million a year contract right now for two more years. Uh, AAB on the cap. But his upside is just disgusting. He's just been buried in, a Rangers, in the Rangers lineup a little bit. Hasn't had the opportunity to play up on the top lines all that much, although they have tried him up there. And they've tried him on the right side. He doesn't really work out on the right side. It doesn't appear to me anyways that he works out on the right side. So I would say in this deal, quite simply, it's going to be Burakoski, who is a restricted free agent. He's kind of been up and down. The guy's got 30 goal scoring ability, man. Uh, he's going to he's going to be a UFA though and would have to be re-signed. That's difficult. I I wouldn't want to give him more. I'd have to talk. Uh, they would they would probably have to talk to his agent and see what numbers he's looking for there. So maybe he's not part of that deal. But I know one guy that would for sure be, and that would be Alex Newhook. You would be getting Alex Newhook at 21 years old, already 23 points in 52 games. I don't know if you watch too many Colorado games. But this guy is the real deal. I freaking love him. Excellent second line center. And as far as a right winger, maybe JT Confer. Do that. I, I, maybe I'm wrong, but Burkowski might not be able to work out. JT Confer and Newhook. And if they can't sign Burkowski, which I think it's possible that they don't, the Colorado Avalanche get a stud left winger to go with Kadri and, and Logan O'Connor. They're a big, solid guy. If they believe that his numbers up until now are going to massively improve in the next little while on a, in a situation like this. I personally do. Maybe you don't. But it could. It would, I think it would be something they would have to strongly consider. 
in this deal. And why? Okay, well, you say, well, why would they trade Newhook? For the same reason you've got Lafreniere possibly moving out of the Rangers if you've watched this whole video, and you certainly should, of course. Um, Newhook is buried in that lineup. Unless they don't re-sign Kadri, which I guess is possible. If they don't re-sign Kadri and they put Newhook in there, then I guess you can just talk this deal. Forget about this deal. I have a feeling they will. He's just, he's 31 years old, Kadri. Newhook's still a kid. They're trying to win right now. I see them signing Kadri to four or five years. And then Newhook can still play, of course, in this lineup. He, he, he doesn't need a new contract for 2023. But does he really get his best advantage to become the best that he can be in this lineup? And that, as far as Alex Newhook is concerned, might be something that even he's looking at here. So you would get Lafreniere, who does get the opportunity to play high in this lineup. They're playing Newhook on the left side. He doesn't look bad there, but really, it's kind of a waste of a great center playing him on the left side. If you have Lafreniere, Caudry, and O'Connor, and Lafreniere turns out to what he's supposed to be, who is compared to Miko Rantanen when he was drafted, you got, my friends, one unbelievable top two lines. Maybe it's a bit risky. I'm going to look at Ranton and look at Ranton and when he he started out. Uh, yeah, right. See, Ranton and knocked it out of the park almost right away. 2016, 17, he, he was doing a little better than uh, than Lafreniere, but. You know, he played for a little bit, went back to the AHL. Lafreniere didn't really have the chance to play in the AHL. He's pretty much progressed in the NHL with the Rangers. Those kind of guys usually take a little bit to put up the same numbers. But he's got all the tools to put up similar numbers as Rantanen. Even if he's a 70-point left winger, power winger, with Kadri and Logan O'Connor, uh, it's just stupid. It would be absolutely stupid if Lef when if Lafreniere, Lafreniere becomes what everybody projects him to be in the Colorado lineup. Colorado fans, sub yourself up to my channel right now. Be part of this every day. So you can comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think. This has been a blast. I love doing this stuff. Uh... Come join me on my live stream too. That's the other thing you can do if you sub yourself up. Join me on the live stream. All part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. If you like the four major sports and uh, player and everything within those four major sports, you'll like the Steel Flyers <coughs> All Sports Network. Man, I talk a lot, don't I? My voice is going on me, so I'm going to let you go. That's my full 42K. Bye.